but the title, the title of our message today is called Unsung. Unsung. I don't know if you're like me, but I'm kind of obsessed with the television show Unsung. I don't know if you guys know about that. Raise your hand if you know about Unsung, all the black folk, TV One. Um, it's a thing. I'm, obs I'm obsessed. Um, it's about, it's usually, for those who don't know about it, it's a, it's a TV series about people who had their 15 minutes of fame, right? They had songs that we loved, and then you never hear from them again. You're like, whatever happened? Like, where did, I love that song. Like, where did they go? That was, my, that was my jam. So they had, like, 15 minutes of fame, then they fell off. And I had questions. Like, when I'm watching Ung Sung, I'm like, where is Bobby Womack? Where is he? Where is Shalimar? Like, I need to know. I need answers. Where is H-Town? See, I'm losing a lot of the millennials because y'all don't know about this life. Where is Troop? Y'all, see, I ain't getting a lot of amens. Y'all got to go research. Full force. Where they go? It was a whole situation. Where my boy John B? Where did he do? Where did, where did he? I have questions and I need answers. This is why I watch Unsung. I don't, you know, did y'all see the one about Teddy Pendergrass? I like cried the whole time. It was so good. Ah, oh, you'll thank me later. Go look at it. I love this. But if there were, that was, oh, it was, oh, Teddy. So, if, if there was a Bible un, unsung, if we shall say, the guy we're going to talk about today would be in that category. He would be a Bible character who could be on the unsung show. Um, he doesn't get a lot of credit for his major contribution to the New Testament. Like, this guy is so good. And after this particular passage that we're going to talk about, we really never hear from him again. Um, he doesn't get listed in the favorite Bible character list. People don't name their kids after him. You don't see like a lot of these little guys running around. His name is Ananias. Ananias, all right? The unsung story of Ananias. You don't know, you didn't grow up with little Ananias. Can Ananias come over and play? You didn't do, I don't know why. It's a great name. Put that on your list if you're, in, you know, hoping to have kids. Um, I want to give a little bit of context to this guy because before we're introduced to him in Acts chapter 9, uh, there's a major story about a, that a, a person we do know about, and usually this guy gets all the credit and all the shine, right? And this guy is Saul in the story, whose name is later changed to Paul. And if you want, I won't, I won't bore you with reading the whole chapter, but I'll just do a little highlight. Saul was on his way. Um, to be a, a crooked cop, that's basically what he was. he was. He was a dirty cop, and he was out, he felt like he got a right to go out and arrest all the Christians, all the people of the way, all the people who professed Jesus, this new cult, how dare he? You know, I'm a Sadducee, I'm a Pharisee, I think he was a Pharisee, and I, you know, they out here spreading lies, no, no, we about to round them all up, we gonna kill them, we gonna, we, we putting an end to this. So he got permission from the priest and the high priest and things to go around city to city and kill Christians, round them up, send them to Jerusalem. Let's go. Y'all mm -mm, ain't about to mess up our Judaism. I don't know who this little Jesus guy is. So he's on his way. I like the, I like the, the, Bible, the urban, the ghetto translation. I'm going to make one just for us. We need our So then, see then what had happened was... That's what it has to be in there. The a whole chapter is called What Had Happened Was. <laughs> so he, he's on his way, you know, for head full of steam. Like, I'm about to get him. We going to Damascus. Let's go. We rounding him up. As he is on his way, a bright light shines from heaven. He's knocked off his horse that he's riding on. He sees a bright light from heaven. And Jesus says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And his answer is, Lord, who are you? And then he goes on, he can't see for three days. He goes to this town. Jesus is like, hey, go chill out of town. I'm, I'm, it's going to be all right. This is where our story picks up. This is where our story picks up. So I am in Acts chapter 9, verse 10. All right. And it reads. I'm actually, ooh, you know what? Do you have the NRSV version really quick? NRSV, NRSV. I got them on the spot. Let's see if he could do it. Give me a hands up, heads up, heads down. 
No? Yeah, look at Mike. Give it up for Mike. I mean, on the fly. Woo, I keep him on his toes, Lord. All right, verse 10. It says, now there was a disciple in Damascus called Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, get up and go to the street called Straight and at the house of at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarshish named Saul. At this moment, he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias um, come in and lay his hands on him so that he may regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for my sake, for, for, for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has sent me to you that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, his sight was restored, and then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. May God bless God's holy word. Ananias is my dude. I love Ananias. He don't get much shine, but this is my dude. So I'm going to give you my top three reasons why I love Ananias and why this story inspires me so much. And I hope that you'll feel the same after this time, our, our time together. Number one, why I love Ananias is because his response his response is goals. His response is goals. Check it out in verse 10. You back at verse 10? It says the, um, there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he answered, here I am, Lord. That's your, that is goal. Ananias, how many people have felt the Lord calling your name? have felt the Lord saying your name, calling you here and there and time again. And our answer is not always, yep, 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 here I am. Yes, sir. Yep, yep, ready to go. <laughs> our user response is like, who? I know you lying. I know you ain't talking. <laughs> you mean the people at the church house. You mean the other person who's more qualified. You mean the one who don't got the past like me. You, you, you ain't talking to me, Lord. This is, what it, this is why I love my dude Ananias. God called his name, and immediately his answer was, here I am, Lord. Here I am. I'm ready. What you need? What you need from me? Um, I believe that God is putting a fresh yes into our spirits today. I believe this is what God is doing, a fresh yes. When God calls our name, how do we answer? And the Lord, the, the Lord will get your attention. How many know that the Lord has a good way? Even when you ignore God, God got a way of still getting your attention. Depending on your response, but depending on your, God will continue to talk to you depending on your response. The more you respond to God, the more sensitive you become to God's spirit, and the more you hear. Some people are like, I never hear God talk to me because every time he call you, you ignore him. And so then, therefore, he's like, well, I'll just wait. I'll wait. I got time. You don't. Huh. So look, look, I want you to check out. God spoke to two different men, and there were two different reactions. We saw Paul, Saul, who was then, when God called him, Saul, Saul, you remember he had a head full of steam. He was about to kill folk. He was like, I'm about to, I'm on a mission. God knocked him off his high horse. That's a whole nother situation, a whole nother sermon. And he calls him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul's reaction was, Lord, who are you? That was his, that was his first reaction. Lord, who are you? 
Ananias, God calls Ananias, and his reaction is, Lord, here I am. You want to know what the difference is? See, you know, if you saw Paul, Paul looked like he was a good church-going man. He went to church. He was the Pharisees of Pharisees. He was highly educated. He was studying under uh, Gamal. He's like, you would think he was the, 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 huh, the one with the tie on. You wouldn't find no fault in him. But Paul Saul was like a church attender. That's what he did. But when we see our boy Ananias, it says, in our, when we're first introduced to him in verse 10, it says he's a disciple. There's a difference between a church attender and a disciple. Did y'all know there's a difference? So sometimes we mix the two. We think just because we go to church, then it's true. I'm, 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 I'm straight. But there's a big difference. Are you a disciple or are you a church attender? This pandemic is really helping us find out. And we really see in what are we, what category are we in? Because a disciple is a follower, someone who adheres completely to a teaching of another, making them his rule and a rule of life and conduct. So when we apply it to Jesus, a disciple is someone who learns from him, learns to love like him, learns to live like him, someone who conforms his or her life to his sayings and, the, and, and, and his ways. This is what a disciple is. I'm curious to know how many disciples that we have. People who are not just calling on the name of Jesus, but really trying to live this thing out. Yeah. This is going to be our next level that we're moving into in our church, is that we want to build disciples. Yeah. Not just people who watch, not just people who come when they feel like it, but people who are really going hard after Jesus, really trying to follow after Jesus, really trying to live their lives. Does anybody in here want to sign up for that time, type of relationship? I want to be a disciple. And so God speaks to disciples. And when God answers, when God speaks, what should our answers? Because Saul thought he was doing God's work. He really did. If you were to interview Saul on the way to Damascus, he's like, oh, yes, I'm on a mission from God kind of round up all these uh, false teachings. That's what I'm about to do, right? But who really knew God? Who really, which one of them really knew God, all right? Something to think about. All right, top three reasons why I love Ananias. My second reason is God called him out of his comfortability. God called him out of comfort. Now, I want you to really sit with this. This is in verse 11. The Lord said to him, get up and go. That's a whole word by itself. Get up and go. Get up and go was a whole word. Get up and go. Somebody say it. Get up and go. Get up and go. <laughs> People who are watching virtually, this might be your word. Get up and, go. Get up and come might be your word. But that's a whole word. Get up and go. Because if minding your business was a person, it would have been Ananias. He just sitting there chilling, doing his own thing, being a disciple up in Damascus. And then God just going to call him out of nowhere and tell him to get up and go. Get up. That's an action. Get up and go. This is what God is calling him out of. He probably was chilling. I got my little routine. I got a whole schedule. I got to pick up the kids after this, Lord. So... But God called him out of a comfortable place. And I want you to notice the precision from God. He told him exactly where to go. I want you to go to a street called Straight. You're going to see a guy. His name is, he's from Tarshish. You go, look at the precision that God will give you. I want you to believe again that God will speak into your life. I want you to believe into the strategy that God is able to give you with precision. I want you to believe that God will send you exactly to where you're supposed to be to be a blessing to somebody. If you're willing, if you're listening, if you're ready to say, yes, here I am, Lord, without excuses, God will send you with precision and strategy exactly to the people who, who need you, who need God. All right, so God called him out of comfortability. And my third top reason why I love Ananias is because, and I love this, God could depend on him. I want you to think about this. God could depend on him. In verse 11 and 12, this, this really made me laugh because God showed him. So check this out, Ananias. I'm going to send you to uh, this street. You're going to see a guy who's already had a vision that you coming to pray for him. Think about this. God already, God already set up the vision. 
vision. I already said, like, so he already saw that you coming, so y'all need you to get up and go. Wait a minute. Hold up, God. Did I even, did, did you, did we, you just put me in the vision? You just put me in the dream? All right, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. But God could do that with Ananias because God could depend on him. God knew his yes would be fresh. God knew he had a heart for him. God knew that he could say, like, whatever you need me to do, God, I'm willing to do it. God, you don't have no excuses for me, whatever you need. I'm trying to get back to that type of Christianity when it was a yes, Lord. Whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to say, wherever you want me to go, God, my answer is yes. It's always a yes. It's always a yes to you. This is what God This is what God could see in Ananias. He included them in the plans before he even knew there was a plan. God, can he depend on your yes? God, I want God to know that he can depend on me. I want God to know that God can depend on me. That I don't want God to look back, look down and be like, I got this assignment, but I can't use her because she do too much. She gonna make me do like three signs and then another person and then and then I've been I got you know what I don't even got time. I don't want God to look at me like that and be like, you know what, I don't not today. Not today. I'm gonna use somebody else. I want God to be able to look at me and be like, yes, okay, I know. She on it. Let's go. We gonna do it. And then this is why I'm, I'm telling tell you, Ananias. Ananias, we need t shirts. <laughs> My dude Ananias. I don't want God not to depend on me because I'm hard-headed or because I'm stubborn or I'm making excuses, right? So this is why, what can we learn? What can we learn from Ananias? I've I've given you my best convincing arguments of why we should love him and how I am inspired by him. But what can we learn from, from Ananias? First thing we can learn, that God wants to use you. Somebody say me. Somebody say us. God wants to use you to be the answer to somebody's prayer. Do you believe that? God wants to use you. God's not like just dropping down somebody's praying for a ride. He's not just dropping down Uber gift cards, you know, from heaven. Like God wants to use you. Do you look through the track record of history? Whenever God wants to do something, he uses people. He always uses a person to help a person. Always uses, a, that's why Jesus came. He sent salvation in the form of a person. So whenever God wants to do something in the earth, God would always use a person. Now, the hard thing is that you got to believe that God wants to use you. I was like, who, me? Yes, you. You. God wants to use you to be a blessing in somebody's life. Um, newsflash. The Christian life is not just about me. We're not supposed to have the spirit of Beyonce, just me, myself, and I. We don't need the Beyonce anointing on this occasion. This is not what Christianity is about. But that's what we turned it into, is me, myself, I. God, give me. God, need it. God, this, I mean, us four, no more. This is my bubble. Like, just please, like, give me, give me, give me, give me. This is not. We see this. Look, my boy Ananias, he shows us that this is not what the Christian life is only about. Yes, we have needs. We have prayer requests. We need God to intervene in our lives. Yes. But sometimes we just get caught up in that's the only thing we we think that God, God's the magic genie, God is the magic lamp, and I just need you to be the spiritual Santa. We don't really need to talk, you know, just through the, just here's my list. We don't want to do God like that. Our Christian life is meant for us to be a blessing to somebody else. I don't think we, we don't, we don't, in this Western society, we just get caught up in ourselves. And it's time for us to share our lives in community and letting God use you to be a blessing. In this way, it's so powerful how God used this man. The, the exactness, the precision is so great. Um, so we can learn that. It's the second thing we can learn that it's okay. Somebody say it's okay. It's okay, it's okay to ask clarifying questions to God. So he didn't say no. You guys remember in verse 13? Uh, God was like, so just check it out. This is what you're doing today. He's like, oh, okay, okay. Um, but, 
But Lord, um, I've heard a lot of things about old dude, and um, I heard he out here killing people. So uh, what are we doing about that, right? So he didn't say no. Do you, know, you notice his posture? His posture wasn't no, God, no, nah, I ain't doing that. He just had clarifying questions. God, I'm gonna need you to, I'm gonna need you to clear up some things real quick before, before I head out the door. But before I'm on my way out, let me just ask you some things. So I want us to understand that just because we have questions and just we have, we have doubts, we can still do it scared, right? We could be frightened but faithful. We could have doubts but still like, well, God, I'm gonna go. I don't understand this whole thing. Think about all the things in your life that you're holding up because you don't have all the answers. You may not, sometimes God just breadcrumbs you. Just give you a little bit, all right, then when you get there, I'll give you the next instructions, and then I'll, we'll just go like that. God's not going to always show us the whole picture. God gives us glimpses. We go to glory, to glory, to glory. Sometimes God might just give you a little manna for today. All you need is the bread for today, and I'll give you what you need tomorrow. This is our, how we need our walk to, for with God to be. Breadcrumb it out. God, just give me a little. I can ask, Lord, so, so when you say open a business, do you mean like, am I doing a nonprofit? Is it LLC? Like, what are we doing? Clarifying questions. Get clear because we serve a precise, strategic God who is willing to give you wisdom and will pr freely pour out wisdom in liberality to you. So this is what we need. Clarifying questions. My last thing. Things we can learn from Ananias. Ananias really had the, form, the formula for obedience. We see it in verse 17. Uh, first, God said, hey, I need you to get up and go. Verse 17 says, so Ananias went. Formula for obedience. God says, go. He went. God said, get up and go. The next verse after that says, and he went. That is the formula for obedience. Instant obedience is the only kind of obedience there is. Did you know that? Instant obedience. Delayed obedience is really disobedience. Slow obedience is disobedience. Partial obedience is disobedience. Any parent to tell you that? Any parents in the house? Anybody who babysit? Anybody got nieces and nephews? Godchildren? It's slow, it's slow obedience. It's no obedience. You didn't do it when I said it. I said, I said, I know I said clean this room. <laughs> An hour ago. Oh, memories. Hi, Tommy. Tommy always ends up in the service somewhere. <laughs> uh, every parent knows this. So, you know, you know what, 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 what people think obedience sounds like in 2022, they sound like, okay, God tells us something to do. Okay, so, um, so how will I get there? Oh, what would it cost? Because I, I mean, what, what, what's, how much is this going to cost me? Is anybody else doing it? Because if, if nobody else is really doing it. Uh, okay. okay, so like, what's in it for me? Like, what's the bottom line at the end when this is all over? Okay, well, let me check my calendar real quick, God. It's, a, it's real busy right now. Um, let me just look through my calendar. Um, you know what? If I've got nothing else to do, then I'll think about it, for sure. It's definitely a maybe. It's a definite maybe. It's a definite maybe. That's what, that's what obedience, that's what we think obedience looks like in 2022. But the basic definition of obedience is submission to another authority. See, we don't like that talk. We'd be like, mm, I'm an independent. Like, no, we don't, I don't listen to no boss. Like, we, we, we don't like all that. Like, I got to listen to somebody? Oh, no, I'm out here. I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> I work for no man, right? That's how we, <laughs> we try to be on these levels. But when it comes, yes, we you know God wants you to thrive and prosper, and we don't always want to carry these types of uh, worldly mindsets into our spirituality, right? That no, there when you declare that Jesus is Lord of your life, you are ultimately saying, "I my life is at your. I'm submitting my life to you. 
I'm under your control. I'm, I, everything that I have, I'm not doing it no more. And I want, to, I want my life to be controlled by you. I, I, I want you to lead me. I want you to direct me. You be the boss. You are the supervisor of my life. I have to come in and check in with you. See, this, 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 where, we, this is where the language get a little... Because we just say, come to Jesus and give your life to God. We be like, cool, give my life to God. But we don't understand the, the nuances of really letting Jesus be the Lord of your life, really checking in with God, really a quick yes, really a yes without talking back. Come on. Yes without excuses. A yes. A yes without let me check my calendar. This is what it means to have Jesus be the Lord of your life, to submit to God's authority. I don't think you really understand how gangster Verse 17 is. Can you put up verse 17? I don't think y'all don't get it. Y'all don't understand how gangster my boy Ananias is in this moment. Verse 17 says, so Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Y'all don't, under, y'all, not, y'all don't understand how gangster this is. For Ananias to walk into a house of a dirty cop, a criminal, of someone who's been murdering your people and your kind and been doing wrong, someone who was hated and feared and really could have changed his mind at the end. He could have been fickle. Be like, you know what? I'm rounding you up. You don't came in the house. I, didn't even gotta ch- I don't even got to chase you. You just come on. Like, he could have, anything could have happened at this moment, but my boy Ananias, he came up in there with that, I ain't never scared anointing. <laughs> came up in there. Y'all don't be giving Ananias his credit. Came up in there, laid his hands on him, and look, I love it. He called him Brother Saul. He could have called him anything. You all are lying, good for nothing, <laughs> out here killing people. No good. What Esther used to call people? I, I forgot. Don't, that, that's a trail. Don't, don't, don't go there. I was thinking of Red Fox. Oh, fish eye food. <laughs> Y'all don't know about that. I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry. I'm back. I said all that to say he could have said a lot of other things to Saul, but he didn't. He came to Saul in a spirit of love and like, hey, God's called you. God, you know, think about these, the people in your life. Think about the souls in your life. People you can't stand. People you got receipts of why you should hate them. Like facts. Facts on facts on facts. People that really, and God sent Ananias to a notorious person, a notorious person that hated Jesus and laid hands on, I I touched, touched him and said, you know what, Brother Saul, I've come. The Lord sent me here to help restore your sight. You can't see. You thought you could see. You thought you was out here doing right. You was blind the whole time. But God has sent me here to restore your sight and for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. My God. And it says immediately something like scales fell from his eyes. And his sight was restored. Can you see this is how God wants to use us? To go to people, to lay hands on them, to have a touch, a physical touch. To lay hands on people, to call them brothers and sisters. Not call them what they're, how they've been operating in this world. But call them for, for, for how God sees them. We need to see God's heart for people, God's eyes for people. How does God see this person? And that's how you are a brother. You are a sister. I'm laying my hands on you. Be restored and be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. This is what God wants to do through us. Think about the souls in your life. And as a result, his sight was restored. It said he got up. He was baptized. There's some people who are blind and who are down who need you, yes, you, to be used by God to go into Some tough assignments. How many people feel you got a tough assignment? Do you have a tough assignment? Anybody give you a, God is like, hey, I need you to, uh, um, um, 
Holla at homeboy. You're like, why? Why them? Ah! Come on, let me see. Raise your hand. You got a tough assignment on your hand. Oh, yes. This word is for you. This word is for you. God gave Ananias a tough assignment. Ananias took it like a champ. Like, yes, here I am, Lord. Got a few questions, but I'm willing. Use me. I'll do it. I'll do it, Lord. This is what I feel God is doing in this, in our hearts. It's the willingness for me. It's the willingness for me of Ananias, that he was willing. Because without Ananias, the, the, the New Testament stops at the book of Acts. The, 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 a, a, no Ananias, all we have is the Gospels, Acts, maybe first in Hebrews, so we don't know who wrote Hebrews, and then like first and second Peter, and then Revelation, the end. But because of Ananias, God used him to bring the guy to Christ who would be the most influential person in our Christian life, who would write the letters that we read to bring life to us, to show us how to live and how to walk and how to walk in justification and how to walk in grace. This all traces back to my boy Ananias. If there was no Ananias, there's no Paul. And sure, God could have used somebody else if you want to argue. Yes, he would have. He could have used anybody else, but Ananias wouldn't be a part of the story. And sure, God can use anybody else in your, you, God can, the things God is calling you to do, God can use somebody else, yeah. But you're going to miss out on being a part of the story. Don't you want to be a part of the story? Don't you want to be a part of someone's testimony? Don't you want to be a part of the chronicles of what the, the revival that happened in Berkeley? Don't you want to be a part of somebody saying, man, God touched my body. I was going one way, and now I'm going the other way. It was all because that one person kept praying for me. That one person kept saying, you know what? I love you, brother. I love you, sister. It's going to be all right. Don't you want to be a part of the story? God can use somebody else, but God wants to use you. You don't want to miss out. So we are called into a life of service, not to be consumers and vacuums. I'm worried about this present season that we're in, that people are just using church as entertainment. It's, you know, I can take it or leave it. It's an accessory. It's good to have. I mean, I'll probably watch something like on Thursday. Like it's becoming an option, this community, this fellowship. And we're just kind of here just to like, what you, got, what you got for me? I just need my itch scratch. Like, give me something. It's like we're almost taking like Christian hits and we're just getting high on Sundays and then I'll be back for my next high next Sunday. Like, this is not what this is. <laughs> it's not, this was not what it is. It ain't what it is. We're not here to be vacuums. A never-ending black hole of give me, give me, give me. So this is what I'm challenging us to do. God wants us to have a life of service. What can we give to this community? How can we show up to this community? Now that the, you know, we're in another phase of the pandemic now, what can we do? We need everybody's ingenuity and thinking and gifts and talents. Like now, how do we reach the world? How do we reach Berkeley? You have unique gifts and talents that we can use right here at the Way Christian Center to reach the world. Amen? So reflection questions, I'm out your way. You can go get Wingstop and go watch the game. Reflection questions. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. Um, I guess I'll go to the side. Uh, reflection questions. When have you, like an Ananias obeyed the Lord even when you had doubts. So think about a time where you still did it, even when you had doubts. Two, who has played the role of Ananias in your life? Think about your testimony. Think about where God has brought you. Think about that one who never gave up on you. Maybe it was that praying grandma, it was that mom. Now God is calling you to be that person. Because number three says, to whom does the Lord want you to play that part? And this is where we'll end our time. Who can you be Ananias to? Who is God calling you to have radical love, 
a take a risk. Who is God calling you to? So let's go ahead and stand. We're just going to close. And then right after we uh, pray, we're going to go into our time of communion. But our prayer today is that God will raise up modern day Ananias. This is the prayer. God, raise up people who have the spirit and the heart of Ananias. And if that is you, if that is you, why don't you just spend some time with God? Yes, yes, Lauren, that's good. God is calling us to a fresh yes, a fresh yes, a fresh yes. So God, here we are. God, we want to just give you a fresh yes in our spirit. God, we are so sorry for the times that we have said no to you. So sorry for the hesitancy. So sorry for um, not trusting your plan. God, we repent. We say sorry from the bottom of our hearts, God, that we want to do better. So, God, we pray that you would give us a spirit of Ananias. God, let us be willing. God, give us opportunities, God. We're praying old school that you would give us divine appointments. Y'all remember those divine appointments that you will give us people that you want to reach out to. God, that you will give it to us in precision. Come on, I want you to be prepared for this week. This week, God's going to give you ideas. God is going to give you uh, people to minister to. God's going to give you people and tell you to give them an amount of money. There's some clothes that you might need to get rid of. There's some, somebody needs shoes. God's going to give you an idea for somebody. And when God gives it to you, your answer is, yes, Lord, here I am. I'll do it. Come on, how many people will commit to that? That God's going to give you a divine appointment this week. God's going to put somebody on your heart, whether it's to pray. You're going to call and be like, hey, God just has you on my heart. I just want to pray for you. Is there anything you need? Is there? The, I just feel like I'm supposed to give you $50. I just feel like well, I'm supposed to buy you lunch today. I, if somebody when you're in Starbucks, I feel like I'm supposed to buy your coffee for you. Can I just be a blessing to you? Well, this is how God wants to use us to be Ananias. So God, we give you a fresh yes. God, we say yes from the bottom of our hearts to the depths of our souls. God, raise us up. Raise up a community of servers right here at the Way Christian Center. People who will not just be consumers of your glory, but will also bring it out into our communities. God, we're praying for anyone who's never said yes to you to be their, your Lord, to be Lord and Savior of their lives. If you want to invite Jesus into your life and you want to make this be the day that you say, I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life, just repeat after me and say, Lord, I believe in you. I trust you. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I surrender. I'm tired of doing things my way. I want to be a disciple. Teach me how to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and thank God.